Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Ron Von Depp. Thank you. Uh, don't get nervous, Don. I got this all blown up, so it's big print. <laughs> don't have to wear my glasses. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the voting members and all the people that work so hard for this event. Uh, I've been involved with uh, working on events like this myself, and there's a lot of people. Thanks, Don. <laughs> Red flag already. A lot of people put a lot of work into this. I hope you appreciate it. I'd like to thank Harold Campo for nominating me quite a few years ago, and Don Haight for being my mentor. Don uh, was from Carleton. His boy played for me, and I played a lot of golf with Don, and I really never thought you would be my mentor. <laughs> I'd like to congratulate all of my... Uh, my fellow inductees, it's a tremendous group of people to be receiving this honor with, and I'd like to congratulate them. I've known a couple of them, or actually three. Tom Adagnost was a little athlete at my summer basketball camp for two, three years. And I had no idea he was going to be a soccer player. He was a good basketball player. Marshall Thomas, 1960. I was doing my extern teaching at Arthur Eddy Middle School. I was still in college. And he was in one of my classes, I think it was second hour. And at lunch hour, he'd be the first kid that would run in to the office, the phys ed office, and ask if he could have a basketball. He was always the first one there. He'd run down the halls to get it. That's, you can see where he got all his uh, interest in sports. Archie, I didn't know you very well, but I happened to have your brother in school, and I kept trying to get him to have you come over to our school, but it didn't work. <laughs> I'd like to thank my family for all the times that they've been to games, and uh, just you, it's pretty hectic when you think of all the number of times that you have to get kids ready to get them to the game. They always like to come to the games, and they followed it, so I really appreciate that. Uh, thanks to Judy, the mother of my children. Uh, she didn't miss very many games. Uh, there were some officials that wished she would have, though. <laughs> I don't know. They probably all don't want to stand up, but all my children are here, um, and most of my grandkids. Uh, my daughter, Liz, and her three kids, Sydney, Madeline, and Allie, they all play basketball, they're very good at it, and they play soccer and quite a few other sports. Uh, her friend Paul Abent is also got a son and a daughter here, and I really appreciate you guys coming. They both play basketball. Uh, uh, Jade is uh, playing with Sydney this year on the varsity at, at uh, Heritage with my other daughter, granddaughter, who is uh, a senior this year. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, Elijah is a baseball player. He's an eighth grader at uh, about 6'1". He also plays basketball. Jim and his wife Jane, and their children Connor and Olivia. Connor's into hockey at Freeland, and Olivia's plays soccer. Pete and his wife Molly. Uh, Shelby, my granddaughter, plays soccer, and Spencer is into hockey and baseball. So you can see I have quite a few games to go to. <laughs> Matt and Becky, uh, I haven't had any games yet. They have a two-year-old, so that's in the future. John and Diane, uh, their daughters, they have two daughters. They are not here tonight. Uh, Mike and Lori. And by the way, Lori, I made it. <laughs> and she kidded me when she went in the Hall of Fame four years ago. So. Uh, their children, uh, Justin, Alana, and TJ. TJ had to leave. He's the uh, plays football at Hemlock, and he just won the uh, district. And he broke his collarbone uh, two and a half weeks ago, so he's not enjoying it, but he's enjoying it. And uh, but he, they had practice today. 
I have some friends here uh, that I socialize with the ski club, and they're a very unique group. None of them ski. <laughs> Again, uh, Jack introduced the ball players. I really appreciate you guys coming out. There's six All-Staters sitting there and a lot of victories at that table. And so also, probably the most important thing is they're just all great, great individuals. And I had a lot of other ones also. They aren't here tonight, but uh, I wish I could thank them all personally. Because without them, that wouldn't have, this wouldn't be possible. Because they, they uh, made it all happen. We never had superstars, you know, like a, a Jason Richardson, a Magic Johnson. These guys just dominated the team. We had a lot of team players. We had some excellent players, all staters, but they were all—all all my players were hard workers, and they always improved. And I wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for them. I was really fortunate to have a unique group of assistant coaches. After I started putting their names down, I realized that uh, all but one went on to become a head basketball coach here in our state. Bill Mantle was my first JV coach, and he ended up going to Dow because he wanted to become rich, which he did. <laughs> Ron Barzak, who played basketball at Bridgeport, uh, he ended up coach, he was my freshman coach for quite a few years, and he ended up going uh, to St. Louis and then down south, uh, south Michigan. Gary Zimmerman was a girls uh, he had a state championship teams for the girls, and he's now in Florida coaching. John Gatowski, who was a local Carlton kid, he always wanted to coach. I knew him since he was a little guy, and he just. Tried to get jobs and so forth. He was my freshman coach. He ended up getting a job in Sandusky, and he, he got his dream came through. So he was always a, a great coach for us. My son Mike, was a, he took over for me when I went to Delta. And he coached uh, Carlton, and he had a district championship there in his first uh, couple of years. So he, and then he went to Merrill, and now he's the principal at Hemlock High School. And my good friend Bill DeLong, who was my JV coach for, I believe it was 17 years, and we were like, um, you know, Mutt and Jeff type, we just, he was taller than I was. We were, whatever we said, we just kind of agreed. It was just amazing. We just had the same concepts about basketball. He believed in the fundamentals, and it worked out great for us. We had some great, great uh, teams and players because of that. And Tim Crawford, who was my assistant at, uh, and, and Tim came to my summer camps for years, and then uh, he played at Frankenmuth, but he get, was my a JV, or my assistant coach at Delta College. And he then got the job at Frankenmuth High School while he was working with me. And he had some great success there. And again, all of these people, as you can see, we're teaching kids how to play the game along with me. And without them, I don't think I'd be here now. The Carlton Athletics Association was a group of people that, and many of you are in those type, uh, they raise a lot of money for sports. And I don't think a lot of people appreciate when they come around for donations and help, you really should help them out because uh, they're doing a lot of things for kids that uh, don't, won't happen. We had some great fans. Unbelievable fans. And by the way, Andy Pegley, you're one of the top ten, just so you know. I got a little quick story here. I was at West, West Branch, which is Ogemaw Heights. We had a game, and their bleachers where we sat were right behind you, or you're on them, and then there's about three row, four rows. There was a guy sitting behind me from West Branch, and every time I'd stand up, his voice was right behind my head. And never acknowledge him. I learned a long time ago, you never acknowledge that you can hear anything. <laughs> and he, he was getting irritating because it bothered the kids. And they said, one of them in a timeout says, Coach, who is that guy? Well, 
at halftime, I saw Denny Sari and Jim Green. I, says, I told them about it. They said, uh, do you think you could help that out? I never heard the guy the rest of the game. <laughs> Honest. I never thought about it until after the game. I said, hey, where'd that guy go? He says, well, we took care of that. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, some guys, would, they got so into our, our big seasons we had, you know, you'd be uh, like 18 and 3 or 12 and 2. <laughs> they'd go down and play the numbers on those. <laughs> as soon as the game was over, they'd go down. Uh, I love sports my whole life since I was little. I started teaching in the middle school, as they mentioned. I coached basketball, football, and baseball. The weirdest thing was, all my life I'd played basketball. I go out there, and first tryout day for the seventh grade team I had, I said, all right, you guys run down there and see some layups so I can see what you can do. And they all stood there and looked at me. <laughs> they didn't know how to shoot layups. So I got it to start from scratch, and so thus I learned that you got to teach them fundamentals. I learned a lot under uh, Bob Bolt, who was the head coach at the varsity at the time I moved up. And uh, he had tremendous administrative skills that I picked up. Uh, you look back, some people mentioned their other coaches. Uh, I had one basketball coach, Seymour Murphy, some of you might remember him. He was a JV coach at Arthur Hill. And he taught me a lot of fundamentals. And you know, they still work. It's, it, that's how good they were. And, uh, I just had no idea that I would get to use them in the way I did and that the way he did. Referees. Stories, I got a lot of them. John, you probably know some of these refs that, and you've heard them. Cappy and Mike. Ron Stelter, you, you'll know them. I met the Arthur Hill Tech game years ago, and I happened to be standing by Bob Parsons, who was coaching there, and I was at the, at the desk. And the captains had been give, given their instructions, and the kid came running over to Bob, and he says, Coach, he says, they just changed the rules in this game. I says, I'm listening. He says, What's, what do you mean? He says, that referee told me that the baskets on those sides are worth one point today. <laughs> and then this kid comes over and tells Coach that. That was funny. Uh, another one, you guys remember Tommy Nichols? Uh, he's was up north. Uh, he was, the first year I was coaching, he started his first year refing. Over, I had a game at Arthur Eddy. And, uh, I'm sorry, Ricker Junior High. And I got a little excited at a couple of things that happened. And Tom walks over and he stands right next to me and he says, Coach, I don't think you should do that again. <laughs> he says, Okay. <laughs> But that's his way. He, he did it, and that's the way I think a lot of referees got to learn to do it. Uh, you just get the, at the right time, and ne that way neither one of you embarrass the other one, and the game still continues for the kids. And uh, I've had uh, some various things that I, I feel I'm uh, proud of because I, what I've accomplished with them. One, I uh, started the Boytown program in Carleton. Uh, Theron Fager always had it going big time. I played in it when I was a kid. And... Eventually, I found out I had the largest uh, membership in Boytown program in the whole county. So we were doing pretty good with that. I also started the first summer fundamental camp that now everybody goes to camp. But I heard about this years ago. And I started the freshman B program at, with Ron Stelter, who was at MacArthur. We got talking one day about how um, we had so many kids at the freshman level. So we decided to start a little program with the B team, and it's, been, it's still going. I'll get there, Don. Also, as I mentioned, I helped organize the Co Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan. We had some needs, and we went after them. We eventually got them. We have 4,000-plus members right now. My highlights, I had many, many. I could spend another hour here about them, but the one, of course, our 1970, 23-0 going into the finals, we lose to River Rouge. Uh, I found out later that that was Lofton Green's 500th victory that I donated to him. <laughs> we were coming back from the game that kids were very depressed because that's a shock after 23 wins. And we're getting near uh, East Street entrance to Saginaw and there's a 
cops cars flashing and fire fire trucks there and Rex Jones runs up to me in the bus he says coach coach what'd we do you know, he thought they were stopping us they were but it was all the Carlton Police Department and that and they gave us a parade down into Carlton those kids forgot all about that loss and they felt they'd won 23 games so that was a great thing that our fans did for us I will never forget that I also enjoy seeing my former players anytime like tonight's been great and I'm still trying to beat some of my kids in golf it was a great ride thank you very much I appreciate it